Well, it hasn't always felt like spring lately, but it is baseball season. And today, we're talking Ballpark Village with Alderwoman Phyllis Young. And we're going to find out why a mother and her family were recognized for their bravery when they found something that didn't belong in their yard. And later, the, Garden, the Guardian Angel Settlement Association will be in the studio with a special presentation from two of their sponsors. And are you ready to take a quantum leap? If you're not sure, stick around for my interview with life coach Tara Tullius. All that and more coming up on this edition of St. Louis Presents. Thanks for joining us for another edition of St. Louis Presents. Well, spring has sprung everywhere you look. There are blooming trees and the daffodils and the tulips are coming up. And Steve, there are also a ton of construction projects going on around the St. Louis area. Yeah, I don't know if it's my imagination or not, but it seems like more than usual. And a lot of things coming down as well. And there seem to be a flurry of hospital projects. For example, I was driving down 6440 and they've been tearing down the old Forest Park Hospital. It looked so surreal, like a bomb had gone off. Right, I've been watching that for a while. You know, it's interesting because it takes a while to tear things down. And if you go by every couple of days, there's a little more done every time you go through. But uh, you know, that had been there so long, it's interesting to see it come down and uh, exciting with the zoo and what's going to happen over there later too but that's not the only place there's the bjc hospital as well barnes jewish a lot going on there oh they're doing an, a, a huge project it was it's going to take years and years but they've been tearing down one of the old hospital buildings i understand they're going to tear down eventually the main hospital building so when you're driving through the central west end it's a, another example of it, it looking like D did something happen? Is this a, a set of a monster movie? And I don't know how they do it. I wish I understood the technology of it, you know, in a, in a tight urban space, tearing something down and not destroying everything around it. Somehow <laughs> they do it, though. That is definitely a skill. And then another hospital project to mention is that Shriners Hospital is building a brand new facility right in that same general area in the Central West End. So anybody who's driven, obviously, downtown on 6440 lately has noticed this flurry of construction in the whole hospital complex. And not only are things coming down, but things are going up. Uh, there's going to be a new uh, Q-trip somewhere in the city, I know. Uh, also, right, there's going to be an IKEA store. Uh, do you call that the Central West End or Midtown right there in between right, off right. Vandeventer? I can't wait for the IKEA. I think that's going to be huge for Midtown, although it kind of cuts my secret shortcut out that uh, <laughs> it's not going to be quite a secret anymore. Well, if you are, uh, we're also going to talk about Ballpark Village in just a little bit, which right. is another construction project, which is now done. Right. But that has brought a whole new flurry of activity to another part of downtown. So if you are excited about all the changes taking place in the city, are you excited about changes possibly in your own life? Because some people could use the help of a life coach. We're going to throw it to Sandy Stevenson and get some tips about how we can remake our lives. Sandy? Thanks, Debbie. There are certainly a lot of changes taking place in the city, but what about your life? Do you feel like you need to make a change? Well, if you are, I'm here with Life Coach Tara Tellius, and she has the tools to help you get started. How you doing, ma'am? Absolutely great. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. So, okay, the first thing I thought of when I saw this whole thing, right, is how does one become a life coach? I mean, do you go to school for that type of thing? How do you become a life coach? Well, for a lot of people, I think it starts with that desire. There's a lot of jobs out there. We're talking about construction where you're helping fix a problem. Mm -hmm. And again, how does someone get started? When you go to someone who's fixing something, you want them to have experience. Right. So you definitely want to go with someone who's been through a very extensive, good life coaching program. Now, do you have to have a lot of problems to be a life coach? Not at all, not at all, but everybody does. <laughs> and that's the great thing. One of the biggest benefits in particular of our coaching program is you get to work on yourself first. Okay, and mm -hmm. I know when we were speaking earlier, you spoke of a one-year-long program that life coaches go through to essentially become a life coach. Absolutely. What does that one year entail? Yeah. You know, it's a lot of inside work depending on the person. There's projects, there's things that you have to complete, you have to successfully have coached clients to hit their goals before you actually get certified, and much more. Okay, mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about the organization that you represent. Absolutely, so I'm with the thesecrettolifecoaching.com. They've been in business for over eight years. They actually have their own TV show, radio show. you are the show. host of, yes. I am yes. the host of the show. Um, and extensive more, like as far as thousands of people being helped and getting results 
it's amazing. And that's the secret to lifecoaching.com. So what exactly is, I guess, essentially, it's the secret, but what is the yeah. exact, actual purpose of this organization Honestly, the owner, Coral Thomas Grant, her goal is to be part of a big piece of world peace on this planet. We work with people individually, and that's a big goal, but it's real. When you shift one person's life, when you know that there's a format out there that people can utilize to hit their goals, whatever it may be, you get encouraged. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So how did the whole TV show come about from this? Really for wanting to make an impact. So when you watch the show, just like today, you're getting a lot of great knowledge, what's going on in your city, how to improve your life. We work with people directly, give them tips and techniques to take their life to the next level. So what do you do on the show? I host. I get the opportunity to meet amazing people who are changing people's lives on a daily basis. It's amazing. Yeah. And so are life coaches coming in and doing different segments on this show? Mm -hmm. And or are they bringing clients of theirs? And is that something where it's more private than anything? Or is it no, just more life coaches? Not at all. Honestly, everyone who hits their goals, whether it's your financial goals, your career goals, your relationship goals, they're eager to share. And those are actually typically, that's how I got started with the company, those are typically the people that get involved because they go, oh, I can do this. There's mm -hmm. a system, it works, and they want to help other people do it too. So what made you get involved in this then? I'm, I'm curious, what's yeah. the inspiration? Was there something that happened in your life? That Absolutely. Me here? Um, you know, it was. it's a great question. I was working a job over 60 hours a week. I was the no girl. I can't go out with my friends. I can't see my family. And I remember there was a point in my life where my mom got sick. Um, my job basically said, if you leave to go visit your mom in the hospital, you could lose your job. And it was at that oh, point wow. I said, is this what I really want in my yeah. life? And I actually then found the secret to life coaching. Uh, within months, I actually created my own schedule, was making double the money, and was also able to improve my relationships significantly. That is amazing. Yeah, beautiful powerful. story. Very powerful <laughs> story. So I know yeah. you're going to be giving away something today. Absolutely. So tell us what you're going to be giving away yeah. and how do people enter to get this? One of the things you talked about getting how you get started. Again, everybody has a goal out there that they just want to hit, whether, again, relationships or finances or anything. What you have to do is just take advantage of this now. Text change my life. Okay. to 33733. We're going to give everyone a free 30-minute coaching session to get you started. What does that entail specifically? So what's really neat about the Secret to Life Coaching, we're doing something that no one else has. The founder has come up with a technique to help you identify what are those thoughts and beliefs that have always stopped you from hitting this goal, and they break through them and get you on the other side. In okay. 30 minutes, you will have a major head start to whatever you want. So life changes yeah. in 30 minutes. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so it give is. us the website where everyone can get in contact so, with the organization. So it's thesecrettolifecoaching.com. Thesecrettolifecoaching.com. And again, take advantage. Text change my life to 3373. I'll also enter in today for everyone in St. Louis who takes action. You'll be entered into a free 90-day um, coaching course valued at over, over $2,000 as well. Awesome. Well, yes. thank you so much for being here. Yes. And they're wrapping us. So we're going to go ahead <laughs> and take a quick break. Make sure to stay tuned here for more St. Louis Presents. We'll be right back. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the show. Now, a very serious question. What would you do if you found a loaded gun in your backyard? 
Unfortunately, our next guest was faced with that very question, and her family's response has earned them a great deal of recognition and praise. I'm here with that mother, Kena Durham, and Captain Mary Edwards Fears with the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Kena, thanks for being here today, and you have your family with you today. We're going to see them in just a minute. But walk us through this day in August last year. What happened? It was a um, Sunday evening. We were just leaving church. And we normally have two church services, but um, the kids, we all got home and we wanted, they wanted to go outside and play. I let them go out, they wanted popsicles, so I stayed behind and got, um, got their popsicles. And as I was coming out, they were coming back in telling me that JC, my five-year-old, four-year-old at the time, had found a loaded gun. And when I went out, they were showing it to me and it was um, right by his big wheel. He was going to get on his big wheel. He actually picked the gun up. And if I hadn't taught him, um, coming up, he probably would have done something else with the gun. That we don't play with guns, guns, or you never play with guns. It was like the one of the worst feelings ever. So for all of the people listening who have children, and I have a four and a half year old son, your son's on his big wheel, he mm -hmm. finds a loaded gun. As a mother of a four year old boy, I can't, I can't even imagine what my four-year-old would have done with that. So are you pretty confident that it's because you've had that talk about what happens if you find a gun that he told you instead of playing with it? I'm 100% sure that me and his dad, we always talk to him about we don't play with guns, and I'm sure that that was what prompted him to drop the gun, and probably his big sister who was out there with him. But I'm almost sure that's what prompted him to drop it. I'm, I'm sure you thank God every day every that day. it turned out this way. And Captain Fears, how common is it for people to call the police department and say, I found a gun? Because I would imagine many people might be tempted to keep it or maybe sell it. Yes, and very well. Kena could have did the same thing, but she has those family values that are so awesome. And it happens way too often. On my way to work this morning, I'm listening to the radio, one of the districts, you know, we have six districts now, and it was a call for a gun found in the bushes. And I thought about these wonderful kids. They did a wonderful thing. I mean, they saved us a tragedy in College Hill neighborhood. College Hill is a very uh, challenging neighborhood, but it's filled with decent, hardworking people. You got a few knuckleheads, though. And I imagine that particular day, we may, or evening, the night before, we were chasing a knucklehead who may have tossed this gun in the yard where the toy was and the boy ended up playing. And thanks to her family values, her and her husband, they do a wonderful job for us over there. And that's, our, that's what we want to do, the police department wants to do, support those young families and let them know when they're doing the right thing. Well, that's another great point because we've heard a lot about the College Hill hotspot policing and the crime in that neighborhood. But thank you, Kena, for you and your family representing all of the good people in College Hill who are, who are doing the right things. Um, what has been the reaction of your neighbors or people in your neighborhood? I imagine that this story probably got out pretty quickly. Yeah, it really did. It got out really quickly. And for family members and friends, they, we all think about the what ifs. What if he would have pulled the trigger on a gun? Uh, it was not only my two children, but I had my friend's daughter as well. What if he would have shot the gun and hit my friend's daughter? What do I tell her mother? When I told her, she was so ecstatic. She was like, didn't know what to do. I mean, it's always the what if, but the kind of God I serve. Well, and you, as, as Captain Fear says, you and your husband are doing a great yeah. job because we have your children with us today and they've been so quiet and well behaved. Look at them, they're adorable. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. They're all dressed up. Um, yes, they've been very quiet sitting here and with all these boring grown-ups talking. So thank you, <laughs> thank you guys for being here. Um, you have also gotten some recognition from the police department as well. So Captain Fears, what do, what has the police department do to recognize oh the guns? We've partnered with the Fifth District Police and uh, Community Support Association. We partnered with the St. Louis Grand Jury Good Citizen Award Association. Uh, do the right thing. They've won that award too. The kids got brand new bikes for what they did. They earned it. They did a tremendous job and we were very proud of them. And on a, uh, piggybacking on what Keenan said, oh, everybody in this room, we ought to think about the fact that 40% of the houses that have children, they also have guns. Mm -hmm. So we need to, and those guns are often loaded and they're insecure. So we need to make sure we're educating ourselves about those guns and making sure we're partnering with the police and calling and instilling those values that says alarm, something's wrong here. Uh, social media, if your kid has that, you need to check that as well. Now when we, um, oh there they are on their new bikes. That's so exciting. Oh, yeah. Does the police department, Captain Fears, make a concerted effort to do things like this because we so often focus on the negative that it is really important to focus on the positive when people are 
doing the right things and to really foster good relationships between especially children as they're growing up and the police. Oh yes, we have the PAL program, the Police Athletic League, where there's a, a lot of off-duty officers. They partner with any team, they lead teams, youth teams throughout the city. I know Lieutenant Perry Johnson, he works night watch, but he, he has at least three teams he's over when he's off-duty. So uh, we have that program and, and, and numerous other programs where uh, we partner with the community and make sure they know we appreciate what they do. Well, Captain Edwards Spears, thank you for all the work you do in thank the community. You. And Keena Durham, thank you so much for everything that you've done. Thank Thanks you. for sharing your story with us. And uh, it, it has definitely inspired me to go home and have a conversation with my children. I would definitely suggest any parent, as a child, bring them up, talk to them about guns. Guns, they're nothing to play with. Absolutely no. not. All right, well, from talking about guns, we're going to seg into the bumpy rides that you may be seeing in St. Louis, and Sandy Stevenson has more on that. I certainly do. Now, with this winter that we had, we've had a lot of potholes, and I had the opportunity to check out some of the work that they were doing to fill out those potholes, in addition to talking to some people to find out how they have avoided said potholes. So check it out. As you guys can see here, these harsh wintry months have gotten the street crews out here filling thousands of potholes, potholes that you and I are trying to avoid. So let's go ahead and take a look at the streets and find out what everyone's been doing to avoid these potholes. I've seen quite a few, and I think it's because of the harsh winter we've had. Really can't blame the uh, tr city's uh, transportation department. I mean, they have a big job. Well, if you know where they are, you avoid them, okay? You, you go around them. If you can't go around them because the car is coming at you, then there you are. You've banged your car on a pothole. And you, while these street crews are doing their very best to fill as many of these potholes as possible, if you happen to run across a pothole, you can contact City of St. Louis Citizens Service Bureau at 314-622-4800. The Guardian Angel Settlement Association is dedicated to helping those who live in poverty. Through a variety of programs and services, they're able to give hope and more to those in need. And joining us now is their executive director, Jessica Brandon, along with two of their sponsors. They are Casey Berg from Nestle Purina Pet Care and Mark Schlake from Ameren, Missouri. Jessica, you know, we just saw this piece on potholes, and I was thinking Guardian Angels sort of helps people with life's potholes. Would that be a good analogy maybe? Absolutely. The agency has existed for more than 155 years and we work with low-income individuals to help them improve the quality of their lives and that means different things for different people. And if we say different people, it could be anybody from young people to, uh, well, people older than us? Absolutely. We uh, start working with kids uh, six weeks old in our child care center and also provide comprehensive social services which um, span the age range all the way up to senior citizen. I know I've read the term in some of your literature that you, you help people with emergency services and that's you know a broad term. So what do we mean by that exactly? Emergency services for us means we have a food pantry to help people um, meet their food needs for the month when they can't um, make ends meet. And we also have uh, access to rent and utility assistance as well. So we keep people housed, keep their lights and heat on and air conditioning in the summer. So, okay, I have a question now that we bring that up. Is there a specific requirement for those who want to be part of that program? Do they have to meet any specific requirements? Absolutely. We have different program requirements depending on the program, uh, but all of our folks are low income. Mm -hmm. um, so we're collecting income information um, for our child care programs. All of our parents are either working or going to school full time to improve the quality of their lives. So it varies a little bit by program. And is there a long process to that, to being accepted into the program? Is it something where once you meet the requirements, you're automatically accepted? Yeah, in general, yes, that's the case. So we have an intake process where we collect some information um, and we do a needs assessment with all of the people that we serve to make sure that we um, can point them in the right direction depending on their own specific circumstances. And I like something that you say, you say you help people, you give them a hand, uh, a hand up. Let me get that right. You give them a hand up, not a, you give them a head up, not a hand out. Am I getting it backwards? <laughs> Correct. A hand up, wrong. not a hand out. I know it's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you good do A for effort. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you've got an event coming up. We do. On April 26th, we have one of our major fundraisers of the year. It's a dinner auction at the Sheridan Westport Lakeside Chalet. We're very excited about it, and we're here today with two of our event sponsors. All right, so that's Casey Berg and Mark Schlake. So welcome, guys. And why is it that you guys got involved with this event? What made uh, Purina and Amron get involved? Um, Purina has been working with Guardian Angel 
before records. I know that we were f founded in 1894, and so we're not quite as old as you guys, but we've been working with the organization for very long, and our um, the head of our whole HR group is on their board and has just given them a, t a ton of of experience and knowledge and support. And so this is our really easy way to have fun. The safari theme is mm -hmm. always great. And, um, and they do a wonderful silent auction and a fantastic live auction. And we're just really thrilled to be able to be part of it. Wonderful, now tell us why you're involved. Yeah, Amron also has a longstanding relationship with Guardian Angel. Um, we choose to support them because of their dedication. Um, it's really easy to support an organization like that that's out there in the community making a difference in people's lives. Um, so we look forward, you know, to the events every year and uh, continuing our long-standing relationship. And Jessica, you're calling this uh, Angels on Safari. What, is, what, what yeah, does that mean? Yeah, what's the theme? Yes, yeah, it's yeah, a safari about. theme. Every year the event has a different theme, and this year it's safari. So you have to get dressed up a certain way. Yes, I mean, the thing that's the great about our auction is that um, it's a pretty casual event. So no black tie okay. at this event. So you'll see lots of animal prints and crazy costumes. It's a lot of fun. Okay, that sounds really neat though. Are there activities going on during the event too? Yes, there's a live and silent auction. Uh, there's also a presentation about our great work. It's Angels on Safari, dinner and auction, 6 p.m. Saturday, April the 26th. If you'd like more information, call 314-231-3188, extension 128, or you can go online to gasastl.org and people can find out, I guess, more about getting tickets and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Right. And what is this right over here we have going on? <laughs> <laughs> we have the, the proverbial big checks. Oh, you know checks. what? Let me grab that mic over there. We want to make sure we hear your beautiful voices. <laughs> we have the proverbial big check that this we are awesome. presenting, yes, to Jessica today. Mark, no pets on your check? No, no pets on our <laughs> check, unfortunately. So 20,000 and 20,000, this is amazing. Yes, Amarin and Purina has sponsored this event for many years. They're pre presenting sponsors, and really the only way that we're able to provide services to so many people is because of the support of their company. So That's we're beautiful. very appreciative. That is beautiful. But of course, uh, keeping your mission going all year has got to be a year-long thing, finding people that will will back you up like Amarin and Purina, right? Absolutely, yes. Like I said, we're serving more than 7,000 people a year, mm -hmm. and we're only partially funded by state and federal grants, mm -hmm. so the support of the community is absolutely essential to the work that we do. You know, I was thinking it's kind of it's kind of neat. I was thinking, you're having a safari, a safari at a chalet. Yeah. <laughs> is that funny yeah. to anybody but me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is great. Love seeing this type of support, and yeah, I guess. All right, well, we thank you for being here, and keep up the good work. <laughs> and we're going to take a little break right now, and when we come back, we're going to hear from Alderman Phyllis Young. She's got some thoughts about Ballpark Village, so stay with us. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Finally over, the first phase of Ballpark Village is officially open. And it's brought a lot more than just dining and entertainment downtown, that's for sure. Absolutely. So we decided to invite Alderwoman Phyllis Young to join us on the set because this is her district and it has been unbelievably exciting. Hours long waits to get into Ballpark Village to see it. It's extremely exciting for all of us who love downtown to see all the activity that's going on there. Now, when you, um, uh, there were a lot of people who kind of doubted that this was ever going to happen. We went through this recession where really nothing was being built, but there was a lot of criticism um, at the Cardinals and at the city for this, you know, muddy lot that was going nowhere. So how nice is this to see the finished product and to see really how excited and energized people are about it? It's a wonderful feeling, and it's also a wonderful opportunity be for the city because now we've taken something that had no activity going on there and people are seeing what a fun place it is to visit. Good food, lots of things going on. Exciting to be there and watch the game and uh, hang out with friends. So it, 
it's enlivening a piece of St. Louis that hasn't had any activity and it's great. Phyllis, it must be really gratifying for you. Of course, you're the alder uh, person. You've been the alder person, for, is it going on 30 years? Started 30 years this That's week. really amazing. But uh, your ward encompasses places like uh, everything from the loss of Washington Avenue to Lafayette Square and Soulard. So this must have been maybe been, since you've been there so long, maybe sort of a sore spot for you over the years because here's, among all those great areas that you represent, here's this sort of uh, eyesore for so long, and, which is, of course, gone now. You know, going through 30 years, there have been sore spots all along the way, but we've gradually just worked through those and development has been gradual and sometimes it's difficult, but it happens. And it, it's wonderful to see the changes that occur as a result of patients and people working together to make an exciting space. Some people wondered if the city should even be involved in projects like this, especially when the Cardinals are involved. And there was some talk, why would the city, you know, even want to give any kind of help or a TIF or anything? Let's talk about the success now when Ballpark Village is built as it is, first phase, more phases to come, hopefully. It's generating, obviously, a lot of revenue. What does that mean for the city? How does the city sort of recoup some of that money? Or what exactly, what's the process there? Well, anytime there's a TIF, the reason for having a TIF is that a project works better if there's a, a cooperative effort between the developer and the city. For the city, if that development hadn't occurred, we wouldn't be drawing any revenue other than flat tax on land. So having the activity there means that there are taxes that are paid by visitors paying their bills for their drinks and their food and for the employees that are there. So we're sharing our revenues with the developer to pay for that development, but we're also getting revenue off of it that we wouldn't have otherwise. Also, you have to think in terms of there are a thousand people that are employed down there that may not have been employed elsewhere. So we're providing jobs for our citizens as well, and that's a very important part of being a city is making it work for everybody that's involved. So it's not only creating you know, a more vibrant area in part of your ward, it's benefiting people in every ward. That's correct, because you have to have jobs, and you have to have jobs at all skill levels. And so that's one of the benefits of a development like this. Cortex, you know, you drive past it all the time. That's for people who are highly skilled, but they're going to have people in there also that are doing the janitorial services, the food services. We have to reach all skill levels in everything that we do as a city. For the people who worry that maybe Ballpark Village is going to take business away from some of the other bars and restaurants, do you think that after the initial excitement that it's actually going to be a benefit to bring even more people to the downtown area? I think so because I know that my bars and restaurants in Soulard, for instance, were concerned about losing business to the Ballpark Village. But when there's a ball game, despite the fact that uh, the Ballpark Village is open, it's still difficult to park in the neighborhood and there are people walking the streets with their drinks going down to the ballpark, either on shuttles or walking because it's so close and convenient. And Phyllis, I want you to know I'm going to do my part to support your businesses in Soulard, all right? <laughs> all I woman. think there are a lot of people who are. <laughs> Alderwoman Phyllis Young, thanks for being with us and uh, we'll be checking out Ballpark Village, which used to be a puddle of mud and is now a beautiful development. And speaking of mud, we're going to turn to Sandy Stevenson. She has more information on that. Yes, speaking of mud, if you're looking for a physical challenge and a chance to play in the mud, the permanent mud run at the battlegrounds at Cedar Lake may be just for you. Promising to challenge even the fittest participants, this five mile run includes over 30 military themed obstacles, including a torpedo launcher and a frozen tundra. Proceeds will benefit The Mission Continues, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping veterans. Barrel Aid will also be on site collecting those muddy race shoes to aid in its nonprofit partner, Mission. Haiti.org. You can visit BarrelAid.com to learn more, and for more information on the Mud Run, visit TheBattlegrounds.com. All this fun takes place on Saturday, May 3rd. Doesn't that sound fun? It does sound fun, actually. <laughs> My husband's actually training for a Mud Run, the Tough Mudder, in mm. June in Nashville, so we'll be doing that soon. Not in Lots these clothes, however. No. We'd have to wear something a I'm not bit doing different. it here, I'm just watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure hope you enjoyed this edition of St. Louis Presents. We want to thank all our great guests who came by today, and thanks, uh, thanks to you for watching. And make sure you guys check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.